In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Garmin VivoActive 3 and talking about whether or not it's worth picking up as a golf watch. So what we're going to be covering in this video are my first impressions, what it actually does, how it performed, the pros and cons, and also the best place to pick it up. So I will just mention our gear giveaway. If you want to enter in, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment giveaway down below, do all three of those and you'll be automatically entered. So let's start with my first impressions of the watch. So this is a multi-sport watch from Garmin that's going to be great for people who do a lot of outdoor activities, um, whether it be running, hiking, cycling, swimming, that kind of thing. It does have pretty much the same golf features as the Phoenix 5, but it is quite a bit less expensive. It's also lighter than the Phoenix, which I was a big fan of myself, just because I'm not a biggest fan of, you know, the kind of big and bulky watches. They, I just don't find them comfortable. So it was nice to see this one lighter and more compact. But let's talk about the golf feature that it does have. So the most important thing is the distance to the front, center, and back of the green, as well as the distance to different hazards, um, like bunkers, water, that kind of thing, and, and also dog legs. So Garmin normally offers the most courses and you can download over 40,000 courses on the VivoActive from pretty much around the world. So one of the best features is going to tell you how far you hit each shot and this is going to really help you dial in your distance. I know before I got something like this, um, I never really knew for sure how far I hit each club. So I would kind of just get to the ball and kind of guess on what club I needed. And I was finding myself either way too long or way too short. Uh, so it was a big help knowing, you know, how definitely, like how far I hit each shot. Um, and then it also comes with the digital scorecard, green view, and also the pinpoint view. Um, so you can basically see exactly where the pin is. So that's kind of the golf features on it, but let's talk about non-golf features. So the good news was that this watch, it comes with a lot more features than your normal golf watch would. The first is Garmin Pay, um, which is going to allow you to save your card, um, your credit card on your phone and pay for whatever without having to take out your card and do all that kind of stuff. It also comes with 15 different sports apps, so for like running, the gym, swimming, that kind of thing, which is going to be cool if you're actually going to use them. And then one of the main reasons someone would get a watch like this is because it has more like fitness tracking features than your normal golf watch. So generally the golf watches, they, they might just count your steps and kind of like basic stuff. But if you're someone who wants to know more like, you know, your heart rate, calories burn, that kind of thing, that's kind of would be the main reason why you'd get something like this. But how is the design of the watch itself? So it seems like a pretty well-built watch and it's around 1.75 inches in diameter, um, which isn't as bulky as some. Since it's not as bulky, it makes it much more of a better option if you do plan on wearing it out. Um, you know, if you want to go out, you know, for dinner, whatever, that kind of thing. You don't always want like a big and bulky watch. So this one, um, it's a lot more compact and kind of better for taking out in pretty much all different situations. Uh, so it does come with an interchangeable band, which I really liked as well. Um, and the watch itself seemed to be fairly durable. It does have a touchscreen display with one button. Um, and in my opinion, it wasn't the easiest watch to learn how to use all the features. Um, just because there are so many different features on it, it's definitely going to take a while. Um, I've used quite a few of these in the past and it still took me quite a while to fully understand. So that's just one thing to um, you know, keep in mind as you know, if, you do, if you do consider this. Um, but the performance of it, so in terms of accuracy and the battery life, the Vivo Active was pretty impressive in how it performed for us. So it wasn't perfect and it wasn't quite as good as like the Garmin Approach S60, uh, but it was close and good, good enough for us. So it always seemed to be within about four to five yards of the course markers. Um, sometimes it was perfect, but kind of worst case scenario, it was about four to five yards off, which I was completely fine with. The battery life wasn't as good as some, uh, but it did last two full rounds, no problem for us. And that's all you can really ask for. Um, most golf watches are kind of in that range. Um, so it's pretty standard across the board. But let's talk about what I like. So it's a great watch if you do multiple different sports. It has most of the golf features you'd be looking for. It's not as big and bulky as some of the others. And then it's reasonably priced as well. What I don't like, it doesn't have as many golf features as some of the you know higher end golf specific watches. Some of the apps were a little glitchy. Um, which is probably going to be fixed in the next software update. Whenever we were testing it out, um, a new software release had just been updated, so it was like the beta version. Um, so there's kind of bugs that are going to be fixed out as time goes on. So probably in the next software update, this will be fixed and there probably won't be a problem. And then the heart rate monitor isn't always accurate. Um, sometimes it was, sometimes it wasn't. 
Um, I don't really you know, care what my heart rate monitor says, so I don't use it. So it wasn't a big deal, but those are kind of the main pros and cons to it. But let's cover the breakdown. So peripherals, I'll give it a nine. Price curl, I'll give it a nine. Ease of use, a seven. My personal score, an 8.5, which is pretty solid for a multi-sport golf watch. Frequently asked questions, so can the watch store music? Um, no, it can't, but it can't control the music on your phone. Are there more accurate watches out there? The Garmin S60 is probably the best, um, but it is only a few yards on average better. Um, so honestly, it's not you know it's not that much better, but it is slightly. Um, is it too big for women? And it's not super bulky, um, so it's gonna fit men and women with bigger or smaller wrist sizes. Okay, so is it worth it? Taking into account all the pros, all the cons, I would say it's not perfect and it's not the best golf watch on the market. But if you do plan on using it for multiple different sports, it could be a great option for you. It's probably the best multi-sport watch in its price range, and that's why I would give it a thumbs up. If you're just going to be using it for golf and you want the most golf features possible, go with like the Garmin S60. It's probably my favorite. I will leave a link for that down below so you can check out my full review and the best place to pick that up. But if you would like to see more images or reviews of any of the mentioned products, or you want to get any of them for the lowest price available, click the link in the description down below. At the time of the video, that was the best place I could find it, so you can go ahead and check out the current price if you want. And if you have any questions, leave a comment down below, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And that's going to be it for the video, hope you enjoyed and we'll see you.